Hello, and welcome to another feature in five. I'm with Glenn today, and today we're going to talk about um, native SQL cluster support on BMC. Is that right? Yeah, man, this is pretty awesome. cool. This is one of those instances where we get to see the future before it actually comes, mm -hmm. uh, as, or as our buddy John likes to say, the future is here today. Yeah. So as you can see, we're already logged into VMware Cloud on AWS. Mm -hmm. I have an SCDC deployed. Uh, this is just an entry level three host simple cluster. I'm going to pop into Virtual Center. Uh, what we've recently done is we've enabled the, the ability to configure uh, SCSI 3 persistent reservations inside virtual machines for vSAN uh, inside VMware Cloud and AWS. So what, what, I, what I'd like to do now is very quickly walk you through this process. Mm -hmm. We're going to configure this from the beginning to end and then go through a failure. Okay. Right. So first things first, I've got SQL01 here. This is the first node of my cluster. And we're going to configure this for that, that, that SCSI 3 persistent re reservation that we need inside a proper SQL Server cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, so first things first, I need to add a new SCSI controller. Right. Uh, and this SCSI controller, we actually need to come in here and modify the bus sharing type to physical. And this is going to be uh, enable the operating system to know that the underlying SCSI controller that it's attached to is capable of supporting those persistent reservations in the first place. Just like RDMs. Exactly, yeah. So now we're going to come in here and create a hard disk, uh, a new uh, BMDK, something simple, 1.5 terabytes. Uh, and then, but we do need to come in and set a couple additional settings inside the environment. Mm -hmm. Of course, we need to set our, our, our SPBM policy uh, right. to make sure that we get the right performance requirements on it. But we also need to modify the disk mode to persistent. And it's the combination of setting the disk mode to independent persistent and being attached to a SCSI controller that has the disk mode set to physical sharing. Mm -hmm. Those two settings combined line everything up so that, that vSAN is able to support those, those persistent reservations that a proper SQL Server cluster needs to be able to share disk resources and do failover. Sure. Okay. So now that we've got that all set up, let's go just real quick. We'll pop into SQL02. We need to repeat this process to attach those drives to our secondary host. Uh, we'll just attach that SCSI controller very quickly. And then we'll mount that existing hard disk that we put on uh, SQL01 originally. Inside SQL01, there we go. All right. Uh, now, one thing that's a little bit different than, than like, let's say, how a shared multi-writer Oracle works, since this is a, a basically a VMX implementation, mm -hmm. right? The, the VM configuration itself is what informs the underlying operating system that, that it's capable of supporting this feature. It means that we have to be careful and make sure that we repeat our, our configuration on each individual VM because these settings are not persisted through the VMDK directly. Sure, so that's why we have to set the SPBM policy the same. And, okay, yeah, cool. exactly. But at that point, everything's lined up. So now if we come and hop in to this individual virtual machine, uh, we'll go ahead and log in real quick. You can see I've already got it set up to run a cluster quick start. So we'll just get this configured. Uh, we'll run our, our validation wizard. And as we can see, we've already passed all those SCSI 3 persistent reservations. We're failing the, the storage spaces persistent reservations, but that's expected. We're not DAS storage. We're not trying right. to build a, a storage spaces array. Sure. Uh, and at that point, we're good to go. So we'll, we'll create our cluster. We just need to give it an IP address and a name. And then we're good to go. And our Windows will just go through and build its cluster out in the environment. It takes us just a second here. Mm -hmm. And when we're done, boom, there's our disk. Nice. All right. So now let's fast forward a little bit, uh, and, and we've got SQL Server installed. We've got uh, everything up and running. We're going to log into this this Harness VM that I've got configured here, uh, and you'll notice that that I've got HammerDB running. So we're just running a, a TPCC workload, uh, and in the background, if you keep your eye over here, you'll notice that SQL02 just died. So that when it died, those TPMs dropped to zero, right? Because the service sure. dies instantly. It takes the cluster a second to detect the actual failure in the application stack, but boom, Windows Server has detected the failure, and now it's just going to go through and do its planned failover. Now, since I'm using Hammer as a as a uh, example workload here, it doesn't restart. It's not that sophisticated, so we're going to have to kill it. But we'll just restart it, uh, and and sure enough, the server is back and responding. It's it's back where we were. Hey, nice and. Beats, uh, beats the hell out of REMs, doesn't it? Yes, sir. All right. Thanks, Glenn. No, thank you, Miles. More information like this and more videos on storagehub.viawire.com.